Well, just for the record, we have not yet created an, a cell driven by a man-made chromosome. Uh, based on the chromosome transplant experiment, though, uh, we know that that is definitely possible. Uh, there's a lot of barriers to it. There's uh, different mechanisms in cells where because these are, in fact, key mechanisms of evolution, if you're a cell swimming in the ocean and not only you take up a gene, but you take up a whole chromosome from another species, and it instantly transforms uh, what you do as a species. Uh, some species wanted to develop uh, mechanisms to protect them against that. There's a lot of barriers we have to overcome. Uh, I'm hopeful it will happen this year. I think viruses move genes around from totally disparate species uh, in a very common fashion. So we, we have genes in our genome that resemble uh, some you know, from distant viruses. In fact, a third of our genome is uh, basically viral contaminant. Uh, when we sequenced the smallpox genome, the smallpox genome had a uh, half dozen clearly human-derived genes. Uh, we see bacterial genes moving in a lateral fashion from archaea to bacteria. Uh, to plants, to single-cell eukaryotes. So we do have constant information exchanged across the diversity of species on this planet. Uh, we're saying we see evidence of every branch of life uh, in almost every genome. It depends on which gene you choose, and that's been the problem with molecular taxonomy. If you choose one gene out of uh, two or 3,000 in a genome and try and classify it on that, you come up with one answer. If you pick another gene, you get a different tree. If you try and look at the genome as a whole, you get a totally different answer. So, yes, we see genes moving around. You know, the, the visible world and these few visible species, to me, are, are, are somewhat uh, bizarre extremes of evolution. They're not the, the standard. But if you look in those, uh, in the marsupial versus, uh, uh, you know, a platypus uh, genome, uh, you would definitely find a clear-cut uh, similarity. If we sequenced another mammalian genome, we would not discover a single new gene. We would discover unique combinations that made that mammal versus us, but we have saturated the gene set for mammals. So we can, we can print out and say, but they, uh, uh, the gene set of mammals, uh, over half of those are shared broadly with other species. So you can't draw a bright line in every gene and say, these are plants and these are mammals. These are humans and these are marsupials because we've used, it gets back to the gene-centric view. We've used those in the random design of biology as we will use them in the very specific design that we do in the laboratory. And so taxonomy is something where people sort of fool themselves of justifying what they see with their visual acuity. So when we look at bacterial evolution, a typical bacteria will have 2,000 genes in it. Each one of those 2,000 genes has its own separate evolutionary tree that you can construct, and none of them have the same timeline that you could no, put that's together. Right, but that's bacteria. And, but that's bacteria. So viruses pick up bacterial genes all the time. They pick up mammalian genes all the time. A third of your genome is virus. It's not just you personally. It's all of us have that. Uh, and uh, th there are subtle differences in those that if a taxonomist was to measure viral genes unmistakably, thinking it was a human gene, they would come up with a very different answer than one that was in the human lineage perhaps from the beginning. Wow. Aren't we really dependent on... Uh, for our life to have a lot of animal cells in our body, and in essence, are we not a human but a zoo? Well, it depends on what you have for breakfast. Uh, so we have 100 trillion human cells. We have at least that many bacterial cells associated with us. So, so we are it, a zoo. Well, we're, it depends. Uh, you know, there's not too many bacterial zoos. But, but an important part of human metabolism, human diet, is you're not so much what you eat, as people say, you're what you feed the bacteria in your gut. So when we look at the chemicals in the blood after a meal, there's roughly 2,500 compounds that we as a species can make. Uh, we see roughly twice that many as bacterial metabolites 
in our guts from uh, what we feed them. So we live in a bacterial milieu. We breathe it, our guts, every orifice, our skin. We have more bacterial cells than we have human cells, and they are a very key part of our existence. We can't exist in a healthy life uh, without them.